Hello team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to discuss some coffee shots on CCSP topic. If you're new to my channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos. My name is Prab Nair. For more information, you can refer my LinkedIn profile. Without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Thank you. Okay, so first coffee shot. Which of the following is the most critical step in the forensic process in a cloud environment. It means the question talking about what is the challenge, what is the most important or dependent step we have when we're doing a forensic process in a cloud environment. Option A, seizure and acquisition of digital artifacts. Definitely if you ask me in the case of multi-tenant in the public cloud, even in the private cloud, collecting an evidence from that remote system is always a challenge. Because suppose we have an on-prem system So you have access from the this level to this level, even you have a physical access. But in the case of cloud, as a customer, you don't have access to end to end control over the system. No matter Amazon is providing or any cloud provider providing you the private cloud as a service, but you don't have a physical access of the system. So seizure and acquisition of digital artifacts is always a challenge. Second is preservation of artifacts. That is also a challenge because when we obtaining an evidence from on-prem system or obtaining an evidence from the cloud, maintaining the integrity of an evidence is a challenge. Analysis is also a challenge because sometimes lack of skill lead to the issue. But with the help of training and good tool, we can able to address this challenge. Okay. Reporting of the artifacts is also a was most important thing, but without a B, C, D will be ineffective. The most important step in a forensic investigation is obtaining an evidence because if you fail to obtain the complete evidence, you will not able to preserve that. When you are unable to preserve, you are unable to analysis. And when you are unable to analysis, you are unable to report. So the most important thing is obtaining an evidence from the cloud environment. That's why the answer is A for alpha. Let's move to the next coffee shot. So which service model provide the most agility? The first keyword is agility, resilience and potential economic benefit. See, if you go by the infrastructure services, I still need to hire an administrator. I need to pay for the OS. I need to pay for the operation cost. Okay. So that is definitely not an economic benefit. Okay. That is also not resilience because I need to upgrade my server for a scalability, but agility is there. Second, in the case of B pass, definitely we need to hire the developer and we need to take care of the application that we deploy on that. DAS is basically called as a database as a services, which is there's no service called DAS. So the most effective answer is basically a software as a services. The reason why everything is developed by vendor. Live example, go to meeting, office, three, five, everything. Everything is taken care by the cloud provider. I just need to pay for what I use. I don't own anything. Operation cost is also less. That's why the answer is basically A, A for alpha. Let's move to the next coffee shot. Which of the following is the primary tool? The keyword is primary. Primary tool required for managing a cloud governance. It means we have a cloud user and uh, this is my internet and we have a cloud provider this is my cloud provider so customer is getting a service from the cloud provider and cloud provider providing me a service request and provide this is basically as per the contract anything which is not in the contract no one will take the accountability for that and question talking about primary tool. So a contract is a very close option. Second is called as a supplier assessment question talking on managing cloud. It means managing an operation. Supplier assessment is a very good thing from a due care and due diligence. And that's something you will do before onboarding and after onboarding. But after on after consuming the cloud service, if it's not in the contract, you can't do the supplier assessment. Three is called as a compliance reporting. That is also an important tool, but that is not a primary tool. Audit report is giving me a visibility about the cloud governance, but until unless it is not in the contract, we cannot able to manage that. So contract play a very important role to manage the 
relation between the customer and the cloud provider. If there is no contract about supplier assessment, compliance reporting, audit reporting, we will not able to proceed with that. That is why the answer is one, which is called as a contract. Another tricky question, in which service model, in which service model cloud customer primarily needed most negotiation contract with the cloud provider? See, in the case of IAS, we need a negotiation but we have a more visibility so we can okay to offload some of the controls from the contract because we have a control over the system we have a control over the os we have a control over the network in the case of pass we get a platform we deploy application on the cloud so we have a control over the application there also we need a contract to be negotiated and customized but the most important negotiation we required in the case of SaaS, because everything is developed by a cloud provider everything we just consuming their application as per the subscription. The only thing which I basically responsible in the case of SaaS is our data security and the compliance. Rest is managed by them. We just get a one interface from that interface. We upload the data. We download the data. What is happening in the back end? We have no visibility. So we always negotiate with the cloud provider in the case of SaaS. Okay, because in a SaaS, we have a limited control. That's why the answer is A for alpha. Let's move to the next coffee shot. Okay. So as a part of SDLC, software developers are testing the security, testing the security of new application developed in pass cloud, which is the best security test for discovering application vulnerability without inspecting the cloud application source code it means we are not involving in source code because when you involved in reviewing the source code then it is called as a sast with white box testing it in, in in this kind of a testing approach we are not executing an application and analyzing a response and identifying the bug we just reviewing the source code and from there we basically identifying the code error but here they're saying that without inspecting the source code so a definitely not an answer because in a white box testing we have access to the source code there is nothing called as a blue box c there is a black box because in a black box without reviewing the source code we basically test an application how we simply analyze the application running environment and identifying the bug in a running state like sending a script and how it replied to the script by which we can identify the bug identify the bug there's nothing called as a red box testing we have a red teaming the team who does this testing so the close option is basically called as a c c for charlie okay huh? if the question talking about with executing or inspecting a source code then answer is basically a but here the question talking about without inspecting the source code that's why i basically went with the black box testing which is a with a dynamic application security testing approach okay in a running state executing and finding the bug Let's move to the next coffee shot. You are developing an application in a cloud environment. You would like to check programming error. This time it means without reading a code, you cannot able to identify the error. So programming errors and vulnerability such as SQL injection and cross site scripting, which of the following testing produce the superior result. See SQL injection and cross site scripting. We can able to done. Do, uh, we can do with the help of DAST also. How? We have a tool which generate the script and that script is basically sent to the application input boxes and how it basically reply we can able to analyze. But the question talking about programming error, it means we would like to know the source code from there we try to validate the inputs. So A will not be the answer because A will not able to provide the superior result. C and D is more from the buffer overflow point of view so c and d removed the only option is basically left is b sas static application security testing where we reviewing the code from there we identifying the bug in the application and c and d is basically include in the b also that's why the close option is basically b let's move to the next coffee shot so as a part of sdlc software developers are testing the security of a new application developed in a pass cloud which is the best security test for discovering applications vulnerability with inspection of the source code. So white box, we have access source code. 
there's nothing called as a red box there's nothing called as a blue box we have a red team and we have a blue teaming in black box we don't have a access to the source code but in this question they're talking about inspection of a source code so only option which is basically very close is a because we have a access source code so white box with a sast approach we can able to identify bug in the source code that's why the answer is a for alpha let's move to the next coffee shot okay you are a cloud security consultant and your company want to enhance the availability of the service. Your company has decided to continue private cloud but also want to adopt public cloud public IaaS cloud service for hybrid integration for BCPDR. It means if their private cloud is down, they can able to switch their load to public cloud. Cloud IS offerings are defined, developed, published, provisioned, and managed through the API from the service provider. So which of the following best action plan we can use to promote the interoperability and portability? Now let me explain you interoperability portability because they're saying that interoperability portability across two cloud provider for application data movement. It means on-prem and, and the cloud. See when we say interoperability, it means we have a module here. Okay, so this module is parallelly working with the environment one and environment two. So that is basically called as an interoperability. But portability mean we have an environment one and we have an environment two. So application is moving from one environment to the other environment. That is basically called as a portability shift and lift. Whereas interoperability mean that use within a two environment simultaneously. Example, when you are in a roaming, so you switch from one provider to other provider, but you can come back to the same provider. But when you're talking about porting, you're porting the same from one provider to the other provider permanently. So question talking about which of the following best action plan we can use to promote the interoperability portability if we are using both applications, both cloud provider on the same time. So option A, API must be standardized to enable the hybrid cloud user to move workload quickly and easily across the different cloud provider without vendor lock-in. Vendor lock-in mean you have to stick with one vendor per a particular time timeline. But here, if I'm using a standard API, it is easy for me to do the shift and lift. So A can be the good option. Second is use of an effective contract to provide the cloud visibility. This is not a technical control. That is more like an administrative control. It is more like a reactive control. So B cannot be the right option. Option C is API must be proprietary, but okay, to enable the hybrid cloud user to move workload quickly and easily. But in the case of proprietary, it means it is limited to one particular vendor. In that case, you can't do the migration. See, one small tip I would like to give in CCSP exam. You have to be very careful with the keywords in the options because one keyword is basically change the answer. So here, because of proprietary, I'm not going with the C. D saying the use of a third party report to provide re provide reduce the risk to an acceptable level. But the question talking about integration and D is not at all somehow related with the question. So I am going with the answer basically called as a A, A for alpha because by providing the API with standardized parameter, we can able to move the machine easily from one environment to other environment. That's why the answer is A for alpha. Let's move to the next coffee shot. Which of the following is most important consideration while working on the cloud security architecture? Option one is visibility compliance monitoring. Definitely we need a visibility what is happening in the cloud. I want my cloud to be comply with defined regulations, policies and everything and we can able to do the monitoring. So yes, that is the most important thing. Second is data discovery and protection. That is also true because I want to discover the data and I want to protect the data. Identity management is also required by which I can able to manage the access. Automation is also required by which I can able to automate the task. And policy orchestration is required for the integration. But somehow four is a part of a one because if we have a automation, it is easy for me to do the monitoring. Until unless we don't have a visibility, we cannot go for the automation. Identity management can be achieved by the visibility and data discovery without visibility and monitoring cannot be done. So visibility, compliance and monitoring is more like a governance, whereas a two, three, four is more like an operation. That is why the most important thing is required the visibility which drive the security in the system. And that is why from a cloud security architecture point of view, I need a visibility what is happening so that I can able to control and by which I can able to comply. If I'm able to comply, I can able to discover and protect the data and I can have a proper monitoring there. That's why the answer is A, which is called one. If you find this video useful, do share in your network and do let me know your feedback in the comment section. What is the next video you want me to make on CCSP or any other topic? 
and thank you for watching my video and do subscribe to my channel team thank you bye